What's up people? Welcome back to Motion Cap. We will be watching the recap of the movie. See for me. Enjoy the video. Okay, you've got some stairs ahead of you. Railings on your left. Careful. The movie begins with the introduction of the protagonist, Sophie Scott, who used to be a professional downhill skier. Sophie is seen packing her suitcase while we hear a commentator narrating the events of a skiing competition on TV. As Sophie gets up and makes her towards the main door, it is revealed that she is blind. Just as Sophie opens the main door of the house, she is interrupted by her mother who doesn't allow her to leave. Her mother asks her about an unusually high paycheck, but Sophie dismisses her by saying she was tipped by one of her wealthy employers. Sophie then leaves by saying she has got another gig for cat sitting and she is getting late for it. On her way to the gig, Sophie gets a call from her mother who informs her about an app that is made for blind people like her. However, Sophie is not interested in it, so she hangs up the call. After a while, she arrives at her destination which is a huge lavish bungalow located on the outskirts of the city. Soon, she meets the owner of the house Deborah, a rich woman in upstate New York leaving for a vacation after just divorcing her husband. As it turns out, Sophie cat sits for wealthy homeowners to make money. The wealthy woman reveals that the cat's name is Archie and she is supposed to look after her while she is gone for a few days. After giving all the details, the owner leaves and Sophie puts on a collar around Archie's neck. She then video calls her friend Cam who guides her around the house through the cell phone camera. After walking around the house for a while, she finally ends up at the wine cellar. It is then revealed that Sophie steals expensive wine bottles from such houses and Cam helps her to sell them for extra cash. However, in the past, Cam helped her to sell those bottles thinking she was in need of extra money. But, Cam no longer wishes to take part in such stealing and selling activity. Later, suggested by her mother earlier that day. The phone app allows blind people to connect with a seeing helper via video call. However, she deletes this mail as well and goes on a walk around the house. Soon, she receives a call from the house owner Deborah who reminds her to arm the security system. Later, she gets out of the house to smoke but mistakenly locks herself out. Having no other options left, Sophie downloads the See For Me app and gets connected to a PC gamer named Kelly in Florida. Next, Kelly guides around the perimeter of the house to look for any unlocked windows or gates. After a while, Sophie comes across a locked glass pane door of the greenhouse and Kelly helps her to open it by moving the pane up and down while moving the handle. After a brief struggle, Sophie manages to open the door and get back inside but the alarm goes off immediately. Eventually, Sophie thanks Kelly for her help and saves her as a priority contact. Later that night, Sophie falls asleep while listening to a documentary on skiing Paralympics. That night, Sophie is awoken by three men breaking into the house. She keeps herself calm and makes her way around the house to find Archie using its collar sound. However, one of the burglars notices the cat's collar alarm beeping and starts following it. After dropping a vase that alerts the burglars, Sophie immediately dials 911 and reports the break-in. But, the 911 operator tells her it will be a long response time due to the house's remote location. Sophie realizes that she needs to act quickly on this so she hangs up and calls her friend Cam. When Cam doesn't pick up his phone, Sophie is forced to use her See For Me app to contact Kelly again. Sophie explains her entire situation to Kelly while Kelly tries to calm her down. Meanwhile, one of the burglars keeps on searching the house to find Sophie. As Kelly guides Sophie towards the exit through the video call, she informs her of the positions of the burglars. Despite Kelly's warnings, Sophie tries to make a run towards the main door but is sadly caught by the men, who disconnect the video call. Next, one of the burglars checks Sophie's phone while the other holds her captive. After checking Sophie's phone and seeing that she called 911, the men call their boss to inform him about the situation. At first, they decide to kill Sophie and run away. But, Sophie pleads to let her go and reveals that she is blind. Upon checking on the internet, the men find that Sophie is diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa, a degenerative eye disease causing blindness which shattered her Olympics dreams. As the men start arguing on whether to leave the place or complete their robbery, Sophie learns that the men have broken into the house to steal $7 million hidden in a safe in the wall. 
Realizing Sophie is no threat to them, Rico tells his men to let her go. Rico also instructs them to pack up their gear and come back later. As time is ticking away, the men start panicking as the cops will be there anytime soon. However, Sophie convinces them to give her a share of the take, in exchange for sending the police away. At first, they don't believe her but when they find wine bottles inside her bag, the men realize that Sophie is a thief as well and they can probably trust her. Sophie calls 911 a second time to cancel her initial report but is told that the police have to respond even after a false alarm is reported. On the other hand, Kelly who is desperate to help Sophie, contacts the police to have them cross-reference 911 calls, in an attempt to locate the house that Sophie is in. She even lets the police know that she video called her and saw at least three hostels in that mansion. Back in the mansion, the men quickly clear out the crime scene as they wait for the cops to arrive. After a while, Deputy Brooks arrives at the scene to investigate. But, Sophie lies and says there was no emergency. At first, she even doesn't let the officer in by saying the homeowner, Deborah instructed her not to let anyone do it. But, the deputy persists in her decision to come inside and Sophie eventually lets her in. Soon, the deputy starts investigating around the house while making small conversations with Sophie. Things get a little tensed up as the deputy slowly makes her way around the house and Sophie worries that her lie will be revealed. However, Sophie manages to keep herself calm and the deputy finally decides to leave. But as the deputy is about to leave, Kelly's alert is radioed out to her, and Sophie's lie is revealed. The deputy quickly takes out Beauty immediately calls for backup but she is suddenly attacked by another one. After a brief struggle, the robbers kill the deputy by strangling her with a wire back to the safe before the police backup arrives. Meanwhile, Sophie escapes with the deputy's gun and calls Kelly for her. Eventually, Sophie gets out but stumbles upon multiple times out in the snow. Following Kelly's advice, Sophie returns back inside the house and hears that Dave has started drilling once again. After a while, Sophie senses that one of the men is coming near her, so she holds the phone in the direction to let Kelly know. As instructed by Kelly, after the man comes close enough, Sophie stands up and points the gun at him. The man tries to convince Sophie to put the gun away while Kelly insists Sophie shoot at him. However, Sophie is too nervous to either put the gun down or shoot. But as the man proceeds to advance towards Sophie, she shoots him a couple of times and the man falls down to his death. The man outside the house hears the gunshots and quickly gets back inside to check while Dave continues drilling. As Sophie's cell phone battery continues to drain out, Kelly leads Sophie to the second man and she shoots him as well. Moments later, the video call gets interrupted due to poor connection and Sophie is now on her own. The injured man charges at Sophie with an axe while she tries her best to dodge it. Soon, Kelly gets connected with Sophie once again and helps her to shoot the second man down as well. Next, Sophie takes a minute to calm herself while we hear Dave still drilling in the background. To relax Sophie, Kelly starts talking to her about her skiing career. Kelly also reveals that she used to work as a combat engineer for the US Army in Iraq which explains her knowledge of guns and shooting. Sophie then presents her regret for siding with the burglars for an equal share that eventually got the deputy killed. With a low battery on phone, Sophie then urges Kelly to take her to the last man. Meanwhile, Dave successfully manages to open the safe while Kelly guides Sophie to him. Sophie slowly moves toward Dave and points her gun at him. However, right before Sophie shoots at him, Dave turns around and dodges the bullet. He immediately starts panicking and requests Sophie to leave him. All this time, Kelly urges Sophie to shoot at Dave. Moments later, her phone dies, and her call with Kelly ends. Sophie is now on her own while she holds Dave at the gunpoint and decides to wait for the cops. But Dave doesn't obey her and starts taking out money from the safe to take with him although, Sophie repeatedly tells him to not move, Dave tries to kneel down and reach for a gun. Eventually, Sophie realizes that Dave is making a move, so she shoots him dead. Next, she takes a few cash bundles from the safe and decides to keep them for herself. While she waits for the police, Rico arrives at the scene and Sophie is surprised by his arrival. However, Sophie refuses and cuts off the lights in the house, baiting Rico to pursue her. Rico slowly moves around the house searching for Sophie while she hides under a table. After running out of ammunition in her gun, she is caught by Rico. 
Sophie almost dies as Rico strangles her but gains the upper hand and beats him to death using a heavy object. Shortly after that, Sophie passes out as we hear police sirens in the distance. In the next scene, we see Sophie in a wheelchair with her mother outside a hospital. After recovering, Sophie tells her mom that she has decided to try out for the Paralympics and plans to ski again. Her mom tells her that they will need money to buy all new gear, and Sophie clutches her backpack and smiles, implying that she took some of the money with her from the house. In the last scene of the movie, Sophie video calls Kelly to give her an update on her skiing progress, while Cam acts as Sophie's guide. The end. Thanks for watching.